Thank you. 
Would everyone please rise for the national anthem? Leading us in the anthem is Cameo Humes, who is a tenor in the Lyric Opera of Chicago Chorus. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? O'er the 
land of the free and the home of the brave. You may be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2023 commencement ceremony of Chicago Kent College of Law at Illinois Institute of Technology. I am Dean Anita Krug and I am pleased to welcome our 2023 graduating class and their families and friends to recognize this great accomplishment. As we celebrate graduation, we know that without family and friends, this achievement would not have been possible. I am thrilled to be the first to say it. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Commencement is a time to reflect on what you have accomplished and hope to accomplish in the future. It is a rite of passage uh, steeped in history and witnessed by those you love and by the faculty who have seen you grow into the role of attorney and advocate. Joining us today is Mel Flowers, a member of the Illinois Tech Board of Trustees. Mr. Flowers, please stand. Also joining us is Kwame Raoul, Attorney General of the State of Illinois. Attorney General Raoul, uh, will you please stand? I want to also let you know that Richard J. Conviser uh, is joining us today. Professor Kahnweiser has been a member of the Chicago Kent faculty since the early 1970s and has taught courses in antitrust, corporations, business organizations, and conflicts of laws. Professor Kahnweiser received his bachelor's and law degrees from the University of California, Berkeley, where he served on the law review. He also holds a doctor of laws degree from the University of Cologne in Germany and is a member of the California and Illinois bars. While practicing at Baker and McKenzie, he founded Barbary and has since helped more than 1.7 million law school graduates pass the bar exam. Professor Kahnweiser remains a mentor to many of his former students, and recently he established the Kahnweiser Scholars Program to support future generations of our students. The first cohort of Convisor Scholars graduate today, uh, and these nine graduates are wearing red and gold cords to distinguish themselves. In recognition of Professor Convisor's dedication and service to Chicago Kent and to the legal community, in February 2020, we renamed Chicago Kent's building as the Convisor Law Center, and in September, uh, uh, 2022 uh, dedicated that renaming. Thank you, Professor Kahnweiser, for all of your tremendous support of our students and our graduates. I would also like to recognize the many alumni of Chicago Kent who are joining us today. Please stand if you are a Chicago Kent alum. <laughs> Finally, but very importantly, also with us are my amazing and inspiring faculty colleagues. I am so thankful for their expertise and their commitment. As 
At this time, I would like to pause to remember one of our co colleagues. Professor Vivian Gross was, a, was beloved as an excellent teacher and colleague. She was committed to the school's incredibly successful externship program and to strengthening and expanding its public interest uh, offerings. We miss her greatly. So, what a law school experience. You worked hard and you got the most you could from your classes and other programs and pursuits, whether at the law school or in your externships and internships. As a result, you are well positioned to parlay your skills into professional success in a constantly changing world. And I wish you well in your careers whether in the law or elsewhere. And I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to use the skills you have learned ambitiously, but with integrity and civility. More than that, though, I ask you to please stay connected. And I mean that in a few ways. First, I want you to stay connected to who you are and what brought you to law school the passion for justice and making a difference in the world uh, that, uh, that uh, have motivated you, um, certainly before law school, and I do hope all the way through. Second, I want to ask you to stay connected to one another. Now, I know that as a class, you face more challenges in getting to know one another uh, than most classes do. During your first year, the year in which usually students ready, readily develop bonds with one another, most of you uh, attended class online due to the pandemic and simply didn't have the same opportunities to interact. However, you are an amazing class and you overcame those challenges. And this by itself is its own achievement, and yet another reason for me, for, for, for me to congratulate you today. And now that you have those bonds, you will be surprised how many times you'll be so glad to be a part of this community, to be able to turn to one of your classmates for advice, or maybe a referral, uh, or just to catch up. And last, I asked you to stay connected with us, your law school. Our hope is to be your law school for life, to be there for you through thick and thin, to help you make the connections that you need to make. So please, graduates, stay connected with your sense of justice and action with each other and with us. Now I am pleased to introduce our first speaker, who represents the JD class of 2023 as this year's valedictorian, Evan Turcott. <laughs> Evan graduated from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 2013 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in History. And during his time at Chicago Kent, he served as a research assistant for, for Professor William Bird Thistle and as a teaching assistant for three courses, torts, property, and business organizations. Evan was active in extracurricular activities, working in the Chicago Kent Tax Clinic, and serving as an executive articles editor of the Chicago Kent Law Review. In recognition of his ab academic achievement, Evan was named a Kent Legal Scholar and later received the 2021 Harold J. and Nancy F. Krent Excellent Award for Outstanding First Year Academic Achievement. Last summer, he served as a summer associate at the Chicago office of Sidley Austin. He will be joining that firm's real estate transaction practice uh, full time upon his graduation. Please join me in welcoming Evan to the lectern.
Thank you, Dean Krug, and hello, everyone. I'm truly honored to stand here before you all today representing the 2023 class of Chicago Kent College of Law. On behalf of the graduated class, I would first like to thank the Chicago Kent faculty, staff, administration, and deans for their support and guidance throughout our law school journey. And thank you to all the friends, family members, spouses, and partners for all your support throughout law school and for joining us today to celebrate this accomplishment. And of course, happy Mother's Day to all the moms here in attendance. Uh, my own mom, an attorney herself, gave me this advice when I told her I was applying to law school. She said, son, don't go to law school. <laughs> I'm so sorry, mom, this is what my rebellious phase looks like. To my classmates, I am humbled to be among such a talented and accomplished group of individuals. Each of you has worked tirelessly to achieve your goals and make the most of law school. From participating in extracurriculars, internships, legal clinics, and beyond, you have all demonstrated a commitment to the law and to making a positive impact on your peers, your communities, and your future clients. Most of us began law school during the unprecedented times of the pandemic, spending our first year largely remote. Somehow, this experience brought us closer as a class as we came together to navigate the challenges of Zoom learning. One particular difficulty seemed to be locating the mute button while launching into curiously profane opinions about contracts hypos. <laughs> and yet, through those strange times, we came together, we formed study groups and lifelong friendships, we attended incredibly awkward virtual happy hours, and we went crazy in the group chat while one student saved an entire section from being cold called on a case that no one had read. To this day, I have no idea what happened in the Reading Pipe case. I'm very sorry, <laughs> Professor Batlin. So instead of letting the physical separation of Zoom school isolate us, we came together and formed a great community. We support each other throughout that year and beyond. We shared outlines and notes, joys and stresses, and we avoided the competitive culture a law school curve is known to foster. On the contrary, we celebrate each other's causes and accomplishments. Seriously, I think the busiest person at Chicago Kent is who's ever in charge of making all the poster boards to highlight all the incredible awards and competitions you all have won. So as we embark on our legal careers, we'll undoubtedly face new challenges, but I'm, I have no doubt we're well equipped to overcome them. Beyond the legal and analytical skills imparted on us by our great professors and the passionate drive that's brought us here so far, the connections and community we built over the past three years will continue to bring us strength. So as we leave Chicago Kent, let us remember the lessons we have learned and the bonds that we have formed and continue to support each other as we navigate the legal profession. To my fellow classmates and graduates of the 2023 class, congratulations on this incredible achievement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Evan, for those inspiring words. Uh, I am now pleased to introduce our LLM class speaker, Ivana Dimitrovska Rychevska. Uh, today, Ivana is receiving her degree in uh, the LLM program in trial advocacy um, uh, for international students. Uh, and uh, she was born and raised in the Republic of Macedonia. As a child, always had an interest in law, which her older sister, who was a lawyer in her home country, uh, encouraged. Ivana earned her Bachelor of Laws degree in 2014 from Methodius University Faculty of Law in Macedonia, and prior to arriving in the United States, she worked in Macedonia as a manager organizing legal training and events. In 2021, she enrolled in the Overseas Training Program sponsored by Chicago Kent and the School of American Law. And after finishing the program, she received a full scholarship to attend uh, Chicago Kent, where she received the Cali Awards for Trial Advocacy One for interna International LLM students and for US Contract Law for International LLM, LLM students. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Ivana to the lectern. Thank you. 
esteemed faculty, family, and friends. My name is Ivana Dimitrovskarichevska, and I'm here today to speak on behalf of my fellow international students. My fellow international students. We all come from different countries around the globe, each of us having a diverse background. But we all have something in common, the wish to be part of one unique experience, experience that unified all of us. Now, let me share something more about myself. I come from a small country in the Balkans, Republic of Macedonia. My sister, who is also a lawyer back in my home country, instilled in me the love for the law. She is my role model and the reason why I ended up being a lawyer. Like many of you, I had a dream to learn more about the American legal system. I enrolled in the School of American Law, Chicago Kent College of Law. And after completing the program, I enrolled in the, trial, uh, in the LLM in Trial Advocacy for International Students program. This was the most amazing and fulfilling experience in my entire life. And I'm sure that many of you share the same opinion. We shared many things. We laughed, we cried, we learned together. Day by day, we get to know each other better and better. And we became more than just colleagues. Along the way, we gained lifelong friends. We learned a lot about each other, our cultures, our countries, our customs. And without this experience, none of this would be possible. The past year meant growth, discovery, challenge, making our dreams come true. Now this year is over and the day has come. Today we are graduating and we are finishing this chapter of our journey. This one amazing, one-of-a-kind, irreplaceable chapter. But our experience would not have been as wonderful as it is without the unconditional support by our professors and mentors. It was a pleasure to be part of your classes. Thank you for all your time and effort, and we hope that we will make you proud. One thing is sure, we will always remember these days with a smile on our faces, and we'll remember each other. Even though each of us is going on their own way, we always have something in common to turn to. Besides upgrading our personal knowledge, Chicago Kent College of Law was the crossroad on which our paths met. And we thank Chicago Kent College of Law for that. Now, let me thank my fellow students at Chicago Kent College of Law and my colleagues from the LLM in Trial Advocacy for International Students program. I'm proud to say that I was a part of such an amazing group. I would like to thank Dean Adam Weber for his mentorship and guidance during the past academic year. At last, I would like to thank my amazing husband and family. None of this would be possible without your support. At the end, thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers, including my mom. Thank you. Thank you so much to our student speakers. What 
What wonderful comments. Thank you again. Um, as is our tradition, I would like to note a few members of the graduating class recognized by their peers for their extraordinary contributions. The Bar and Gavel Awards honor those who have provided outstanding service to Chicago Kent, the community, and the legal profession. Jumana Abdelrahman. Siri Arends Graham. Joseph Garza. Caitlin Kloss. Renee Kuman. Marissa Latouche. Benjamin Levine. Susanna Lewis. Haley Lofek. Ryan Martin. Madeline Moore. Rana Salem. Janie Sanford. Evan Turcott. Alethea Williams. Congratulations to each of you on your achievements. And now I am privileged to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Miami criminal defense attorney and a member of Chicago Kent's class of 1974, Jeff Weiner. A native of Miami, Florida, Jeff attended the University of Miami before enrolling at Chicago, uh, Chicago Kent. In law school, he was president of the Student Bar Association, a moot court winner, and editor of the Kent Commentator. Jeff interned with the Cook County Public Defender's Office and the Illinois Defender Project. In 1993, he received the Chicago Kent Distingu Distinguished Alumni Award, and in 2013 was honored to be among the 125 alumni of distinction in celebration of Chicago Kent's 125th anniversary. For almost 50 years, Jeff has been a staunch advocate for the preservation of our constitutional rights. In 1991, uh, he argued Florida versus Jimeno, uh, a Fourth Amendment case before the United States Supreme Court. Jeff's distinguished legal career includes terms as president of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, president of the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and chair of the Miami-Dade County Bar Criminal Courts Committee. Jeff is a fellow of the American Board of Criminal Lawyers and a former regent of the National Defense Criminal College uh, and the National Board of Trial Advocates has named him a board certified criminal trial lawyer. In 1985, Jeff received the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers highest honor, awarded annually to the one criminal defense attorney who best exemplifies the goals and values of the association and the legal profession. And in 2021, he received the highest recognition from the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers for a career dedicated to preserving constitutional rights and manifesting an open devotion to justice, civility, discretion, courage, respect for human dignity, and mercy for all citizens. Jeff has been voted by his fellow attorneys as one of the best lawyers in America uh, for 2023 and was named a super lawyer as well as one of Florida Trend's legal elite. He has authored numerous legal articles and is a co-author of O'Connor's Federal Rules and Code Plus, published by Thomson Reuters, which is now in its 14th edition. Jeff actively supports efforts to combat, combat bigotry and prejudice in the United States and abroad. 
He is a decades-long supporter of the ACLU, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the Innocence Project. As president of the National Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, Jeff traveled to Puerto Rico to help public defenders secure sufficient funds to represent their clients. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Wiener to the lectern. Hello, everybody. I'm very, very, very honored to be here because I love Chicago Kent. I love everything about Chicago Kent. I love that Chicago Kent made my career possible. So Dean Krug, who's amazing, who came in during COVID and is doing great things for the law school, <clears throat> members of the Board of Trustees, our incredible Kent grad and Attorney General, Raul, who is unbelievable. He teaches at Kent. He's progressive. He cares about constitutional rights. This is what it's all about. I come from a state, Florida, where we have just the opposite. So I love that the Attorney General is here. He's amazing. And Dean Krug came in right after Dean Hal Krent, one of the longest serving law school deans in the country. He's now teaching here, and I love Hal. So Hal, thank you. And there he is. And Professor Kahnweiser, whose generosity we all know. He's amazing, he's spectacular, and we're so lucky that he loves Chicago Kent. And let me just say this. There's one professor I want to single out as well, and that's Professor Richard Kling, who runs the criminal clinic to teach all of you how to defend individuals who are presumed innocent. And finally, as the introduction to your families, yes, happy Mother's Day, and to each one of you on this amazing accomplishment. Soon you're gonna be real lawyers. That's fabulous. So in the couple of minutes I have, I'm gonna move quick and I'm gonna tell you just a few little things that come to my mind and then I wanna give you some practical tips for practicing law, things that we often don't learn in law school. So I did go to the University of Miami, home of the hurricanes. And um, I, that's it, no hurricane fans. Anyway, so, so I, those were the years where, in rare occasion, you could be accepted to law school without having a college degree. So I saved the worst classes for my last semester, you know, physics and calculus and all that stuff. And luckily, I applied to law school and got early acceptance, and I chose to come to Kent and it was the best move I ever made, but I had zero money. And so what happened is, I went to a friend of mine who owned a clothing store in Miami, and I said, look, I'm, I'm going up to law school in Chicago, it's freezing up there, I got no clothes, I got nothing. He said, no problem, I trust you, pick out your wardrobe, take whatever the heck you like, and just pay me back. So I throw it all in a footlocker, come up to Chicago on a Friday night and go to the Lawson YMCA for $38 a night and stayed one night. And I had no money. So the next day, I was on a mission. I had to find a roommate. So I went to the fanciest area of Michigan Avenue Saturday morning and went up to everybody, men, women, didn't matter, said, hi, I'm from Miami. I'm starting law school Monday. Do you need a roommate? And I mean, it wasn't easy, but finally, this fellow who was getting his master's degree at Northwestern said, yeah, yeah, I got a place, okay. He drove me over to the Y, I got my little suitcase, and I had a roommate. But then I needed money. So I got a job at Don Roth's Black Hawk Restaurant, which was a famous restaurant back then as a maitre d'. Of course, I didn't know anything about being a maitre d', but how difficult could it be, you know? And I had free meals. And uh, 
it was great because Lou Collins, who was then the dean, came in one night without reservations with a Blackhawk game and wanted a table. Of course, I was happy to accommodate him. Anyway, I had wheels, so I needed wheels. So I went to Champion Motorcycle, and I told him the same thing. I don't have money, but I promised to pay you, and the owner was cool, and I had a motorcycle. So I had wheels, and I was ready to roll. And then I started Kent at 10 North Franklin. It's not there anymore, but it was an old building, four stories. It smelled of the old law books. It was beautiful, not fancy, but special. And I'll never forget the feeling of going to 10 North Franklin. So what I learned here was so valuable and so special that I want each of you to know that no matter where your colleagues went to law school, nobody will have had a better legal education than what you have gotten here at Chicago Kent. When I went to Kent, we had just three women in my class. Now, thank God for inclusion. Thank God that everybody can go to Kent and to be a lawyer. When, when I grew up in Miami, it was during turbulent times, the Vietnam War was raging. The civil rights movement was in full swing. But I remember water fountains that said, colored and white, bathrooms, colored and white, signs, no dogs or Jews allowed in hotels and in restaurants. I actually witnessed it. And I remember asking my mom, what is, what is this about? How, why? I hated it then, I hate it now. I saw impeach Earl Warren signs all over the place, one of our great chief justices. And of course, I'm worried now. I'm really worried now because I thought those days were over and they're back. And it's up to each of you, each of us as lawyers, as professors, to make sure we preserve our democracy and our constitutional rights. And you can do it because maybe your neighbors or your parents can't. They're not lawyers. They can vote. They can get involved. But you're lawyers. You can file lawsuits. You have power, and I hope that, we'll use, that you'll use it for the right thing. So anyway, I go back to Miami. And in Miami, I get a job at a top criminal defense firm, and after two years, I started my own firm. We had eight lawyers doing only criminal defense. We handled cases all over the country, state and federal. And we represent a lot of lawyers, too, who get into trouble. And it's sad and pathetic that they put their tickets on the line to do something stupid for a client or something stupid to make money or something unethical. And so the ethics you learned here at Chicago, Kent, don't forget them. Don't forget them. Don't ever forget those ethics. Now, I want to give you a few tips because young lawyers come to me and say, talk to me. Not about cases, not about law. The law is pretty bad these days. You know, uh, it's really a sad thing. When I was a young lawyer starting out, motions to suppress from illegal searches were granted routinely. Motions to dismiss were granted routinely. Now, my God, a judge grants a motion to suppress. It's like a major event. You know, they almost apologize for doing it. It's a sad state of affairs. So we got to get in there and fight. Now, here is my tips to you, practical tips. In Spanish, there's a saying, como te ven, te tratan. It means as they see you, they will treat you. So these are my tips that I hope will be helpful. Number one, come into court dressed like a lawyer. Dressed properly, dressed formally, with the right shoes, with your shoes shined. You, you got to look like a professional because as of today, you're lawyers 24-7 and you are judged. And the person you cut in front of on the highway or the person whose parking spot you'd get right before them or the person you're rude to in the food store will turn out to be the judge or the judge's wife or a secretary or another lawyer. And that's it because you'll have a reputation for being rude and crude. So you're lawyers. We got to be professional. When you come into court, please bring a briefcase, bring a proper purse with your stuff in it. Don't come in with a backpack, okay? You want to look like a lawyer, not a law student. You want to be a lawyer. 
We all think we're above bias, you know? We're all for inclusion. We're all cool. We're all good. But the fact of the matter is, we're not. All the studies show that within 30 seconds of seeing somebody, we form opinions. They're almost always wrong, but we form opinions based upon how people look, about how people dress, about how people conduct themselves. So be aware of that and know exactly the image that you are portraying because it matters every bit as much as knowing the law. First impression matters. So whether you're gonna be in a courtroom or in a boardroom, or you're of counsel, or you're in-house counsel, or you're in the military, I understand we have a few people here who are gonna be in JAG Corps. I love it, I salute all of you who have served the country. I love that, including my son, Fernando, who's a West Point grad. Thank you. All right, a few more practical tips. Number one, this may be obvious to you, but when you come into court, you've got to be courteous. You've got to not walk in like you're a big shot lawyer. When I go into court, I go up to the court reporter and introduce myself. I go up to the court clerk. I go to the bailiffs. I go to the marshals. I get there early. I get a lay of the land. I know which table defense sits at, which table the prosecutor sits at. I know about the judge and his or her local rules. Stand at the podium. Don't do this. Do that. And I comply. Before you ever go to court, go on Google, learn about the judge, learn about your opposing counsel. If you can, try to get an informal conference with the opposing counsel and go into the judge's chambers. Look on his or her desk, see the photos, look on the wall, see the, where they went to school, see their hobbies, see what they do. I had a murder case many years ago and I knew the judge did two things that really interested me. He lectured to other judges on handling homicide cases. So I got his seminar materials, and of course I quoted them in court, and it was very helpful. Judge, you said on page 66, you know, hey. The other thing is this, I saw pictures of him in parachutes. So I said, what's this all about? He tells me that's his hobby, and that weekend, there was a parachute jump in Fort Lauderdale. I went up there with one of those little disposable cameras, found out who he was, saw him coming down, I'm clicking away, he lands, hey, Jeff, what are you doing here? Judge, that was fantastic, here's some photos, goodbye, and hey, now, that's not improper, that's not unethical, but my point is, you gotta, you've gotta get to know the judges, you've gotta get to know opposing counsel, you wanna know their interests, you wanna know who they are so you can relate to them, if they have family, if they're involved in certain organizations, whether it's church or synagogue or Freemasons or whatever, or their hobbies, it makes you a lawyer to be reckoned with, and that's what I want each of you to be as Kent grads. And don't think that you're rookies out of law school and you can't command the courtroom. You can, you should, and you must. So here's how to do it. Number one, you be organized. You don't come into court like so many lawyers and they come in and they're sweating and their, their collar is sticking up and they're shuffling through papers and their case is called and you know, one minute judge and they're looking through all their stuff. You can't do that. That's not professional. That's not right. And when you're not prepared, everyone in the courtroom knows it, especially your client. So be prepared, be organized. That's critical. Always confer with opposing counsel before court. Judges hate it when you come in and you have little petty issues to raise that could have been resolved in a phone call or in the hallway before court. Be aware of current ethical and legal issues. You must stay on the cutting edge. The law changes all the time and you can get in trouble, meaning well, and the bar will come after you. I've seen it over and over and over. The Trump lawyers, many of them, are in big trouble now for what they did. So remember, you're not a spokesperson for your client. You're not a public relations agent for your client. You're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. And there's a line that cannot be crossed between your client and you. I don't care if it's civil or criminal. Be aware of the court's limited time. Judges don't want to read 30-page motions. They already know about the Bill of Rights or what's left of it. They already know. Get right to the point. Tell the judges what relief you want. That's what they want to hear. They tell me that over and over. They hate these lengthy pleadings that they don't read, and they will tune you out. 
So make your point and let the judge know what you want to do. When you come into court, you say good morning, not only to all the people that we've already mentioned, but when the judge comes in, good morning, Your Honor. I've seen hundreds of times lawyers come in, their heads down, their case is called. They don't say good morning. They don't say good afternoon, Your Honor. It's a pleasure to be in your courtroom. I represent so-and-so. No, they just start in talking. They, have, they instantly lose all the respect. Posture matters, how you stand, how you speak, how you enunciate. It's horrible when the judges are telling you, hey, speak up, counsel, I can't hear you. Would you please speak up? You never want to be in that position. So make sure you're ready to go. Speak with people, not out people. If you're picking a jury, remember, the jurors don't want to be there. They're scared. They're nervous. They're no, you, they know you're going to ask them questions. So don't stare them down. You can give them a smile. You can talk with them. You can... You can relate to people with a smile, and that's what you've got to do. Just because we're lawyers doesn't mean we're not human. Our credibility matters. And remember, there are victims when it comes to criminal cases and civil cases and malpractice cases and all that. Even if you're on the other side, there are real victims. And too many lawyers sort of smirk and make light about that. You've got to be known as truthful, and you've got to not be intimidated by judges, ever, or by prosecutors, or by agents. I had a case once where the prosecutor picked the jury until 4.30 in the afternoon. The judge calls on me to start, and he's quitting at 5 o'clock. Every two minutes, the judge is looking at his watch. I asked for a sidebar. I said, Judge, you're getting the jury upset with me. You're looking at your watch nonstop. I need a chance to pick this jury, and I'm asking, number one, for a curative instruction, number two, to please recess for the day and let me start tomorrow. Judge said, you know, I didn't even realize I was doing that. I'm going to do that right now. He did it. It worked out great. And my client got acquitted, too, so that was cool. <laughs> now, always be candid with the court. That's number one. If you see facial gestures from the other side or from a judge, you go sidebar and you call them on it. If you need to appeal a case, you appeal a case. Be aware that microphones are on in the courtroom, so don't start saying bad things about the judge because he or she's going to hear all of it. Don't stand for prejudice. Do not stand for bias, ever. I've been in chambers in upstate Florida, redneck country, where the judge tells, told a joke about black Afro-Americans, and then went back into the court where there were black defendants. It was disgraceful, it was disgusting, it was horrible, and to this day I regret that I didn't say anything. I walked out of the chambers, couldn't believe what I heard, but I didn't say anything. I was wrong. We can't be cowards. We're lawyers. We stand up for what's right. A few more comments, and then I'm going to sit down. To only take cases that you're competent to handle. It is not fair to your clients to learn on their cases. Be active in your community. Don't be what I call a mechanic, where you're good at research. And you know, when I went to Kent, they didn't even have computers. I mean, we, we had only books. There was no, no internet, no Google, none of that. So go to the books. The books are great. But get involved in the community. Not only will you meet people and be part of your community, you'll get a lot of cases that way, whether it's churches or political organizations or charities or, what, or the Innocence Project. You know that since 1973, over 200 innocent people have been freed from death row, 22 in this state. Innocent people. And they're off death row because of us, because of us as lawyers. Write articles, get involved, leave a good impression wherever you go. Those are my practical tips. And I want to conclude by saying this. I want you to get out there and do your thing. Do not be intimidated. When you represent clients, you're the star. You're their champion. You're their fighter. It doesn't matter if it's a little tiny case or if it's a giant case. Every case should be treated as important. So I have a tribute to each of you. It's a quote that I love, and I reflect on it often. 
I'm changing it a little bit because when Teddy Roosevelt first said it, he used men to describe what I'm about to tell you, and I don't believe in that. So I'm not quoting it exactly, but this is my tribute to each of you, to each person here as a professor, as a teacher, as a lawyer, as our great attorney general, and that's this. It's not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong person stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the one who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends themselves in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the high triumph of achievement, and who at worst, if they fail, and we will, at least fails while daring greatly, so that their place shall never be with the cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Thank you. I wish you all every success. Congratulations. All right. Thank you so much, Jeff. We so appreciate your joining us uh, for our commencement today and for your engaging uh, and uh, inspiring uh, remarks. And now, everyone, it is with great pleasure that I now present the graduates. I call upon Associate Dean Steve Sowell to introduce them individually. Greetings, graduates and guests. Before I start the presentation of uh, the uh, graduating uh, students, I'd like to uh, note that yesterday, President uh, Eshenbadi conferred an honorary Doctor of Laws degree on Professor Richard Kahnweiser for his innovation and entrepreneurship in legal education. Please join me in congratulating <laughs> Professor Kahnweiser. I will read only the names of the graduates who are present today. And please hold your applause until all graduates have received their degrees. I'm happy to present, first, the 2023 graduates of the Juridical Science Doctor degree. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Juridical Science please rise? Sami Barnawi, Irakli Kakubaba, Next, I am pleased to present the 2023 recipients of the Master of Laws. Will the candidates for Master of Laws in U.S., International and Transnational Law, Global Business and Financial Law, 
international intellectual property, legal innovation and technology, and trial advocacy for international students, please rise. I present first the Master of Laws in U.S. International and Transnational Law. Oscar Abdurakimov. Oryanda Arizi Lisi. Pitiona Basha. Lali Beridza. Anastasia Biluska, Maya Boutros, Lorena Brege. Camille Damurli, Elise Disley, <laughs> Anna Gardapkadze. Kepsarge Karala, Utkar Kitarov, <coughs> Miriam Kamariki. Anna Bugleshvili, Charlotte Lane. And graduates, if as soon as you get your hoods, you could just keep on walking to have a photograph with me. Nadia Lesveridza, Bako Lobzanidze, Aliyah Mama Diasan Zade, Yulnar Medieva, Alger M. Osmani, Ahmet Salim Ozter, Sandro Sakabadze, Almas Ulubukula Samabaya, Satanic Chabazian, Georgi Shoroshidza, Konstantin Shaiko, D. 
Dinara Shuji Beiba. Ludovic Sol. Christine Topadza. Junate Torlock. Sophia Sopio. Dilnoza Tereva Kidderboy Kizi. Tuzilbai Arujan Zakbakozi. Sergia Ulsoy Esquire. Bogdan Yankiv. Gaborg Nicodemos de Giazarian. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Laws in Global Business and Financial Law, Askar Abdi Kalayakov. Elena Boric, Natalie Gogashvili, Gwansa Kachitya. Mikhail Kupatadza, <laughs> Georgi Managadze, <laughs> Boban Popeski, <laughs> Zal. Barsemashvili, and receiving the Master of Laws in International Intellectual Property Law, Zeynep Sika Akte. <laughs> Sarah Sisek. <laughs> Dimitar Damaski. Camille Monchalon. <laughs> Kenza Tari. <laughs> Zeta Terpalarari. Receiving the Master of Laws in Legal Innovation and Technology. Perna Kothari. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Laws in Trial Advocacy for International Students, Ellen Abitisian. <laughs> Victoria Chernova. <laughs> Ivana. Dimitrovska Rachevska. Nargiz Habibova. Irvin Hassani. Thelma Maloyo.
Tamta Malibadze Givatoa. Ovans Odebashian. Adil Asipiv. Sugra Shah. Vladimir Telotansky. Satni Servatze. I know, I need your name. Okay. Thank you. Sopiko Siglauri. Yagub Nijapli. Go ahead. This concludes the presentation of the recipients of the various LLM degrees. It is now my pleasure to present the 2023 graduates of the Juris Doctor Program. Isabel Sophia Abbott. <laughs> Hind Abdelaziz. Jumana Atap Abdelrahman. Daniel Abraham. Thor James Ayash. <laughs> Kelly Sophia Alexakos. <laughs> Anora Alfonso. <laughs> Zoe Allen. Jerry Altamar. <laughs> Amy Francis Alvarez. <laughs> Kevin Endunian. Tatum Andres. <laughs> Siri Elizabeth Wida Touche Aaron Scram Esquire. <laughs> Ramteen Baramarad. Emily Barraza. <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> Alex Beck. <laughs> Connor James. Bernard.
Kimberly Marie Bernhard. Lamia Bitar. Michael Bolt. Owen Bradley, Alex Brock, Jonah Brandhandler, Catherine Arnprester. Karina Briones, Matt Burns, Jacob Cadiz. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Cardosi. Elizabeth Ann Cannon Esquire. Mackenzie Castle, Francesca Centricchio, Benjamin Ginsky, Rebecca Ellen Shimosleski, David Crest. Samuel H. Coffey, Danielle J. Cron, Stephen Cruz, Elizabeth A. Varen. Amber Jabara Damaro. David Dargle. Allison Dawsey. Isabella Calvez. Evan Jacob Dykstetter. Mairead Anna DeWitt. Ruben Diaz. Anna Domer. Nicole M. Dosamantes Esquire. Madeline Sue Kathleen Dotson. Brendan Philip Dunleavy. Matthew Essensoro. Jordan Barber. Oh, 
Evan Edward Fear. Rodrigo Ferrando. Lewis Roger fils the III. Kelly Pearl Folk. Joshua Gablin. Mary Gadbud. Jacqueline Galindo. Giovanni Garcia. Jalisa G. Garcia. Nicholas Jeffrey Gargano. Joey Garza. Daniel Henry Gomez. Aaron E. Granger. Rachel Grudzinski. Caitlin Gritter. David Guerra. Cole Gunter. Razul Huck. Xavier Tyler Harris. Michael Healy, Tyler Hendricks, Henry Hernandez, Mitchell Higgins, Lauren Hippel. Ulana Hirsch, <laughs> Megan Trelawney Hole, <laughs> Elizabeth Horwitz, <laughs> Li Wing Huang Esquire, <laughs> Catherine Humphrey. Taylor Ayakula. <laughs> Benjamin Jacob. Glenn Johnson. Chelsea Jones. Jessica Kibbe, Joshua Kyber, Yonju Kim, Travis Isiel King, Caitlin N. Kloss. Hannah Kepke. (laughs) 
Nicholas Kohler. Elvira Katerina Kovacevich. Emily Kabaitis. Renee Catherine Kuman. Bradley Kupiak. Larissa Kapinski Gamberg. Alyssa Lanier. Connor Larson. Marissa Latouche. <laughs> Patricia Layden. Naomi Lazar. Benjamin Michael Levine. Kara Ashley Lewis. Susanna Lewis. Sophia Leshevsky. Callie Lisse. Valeria. Lopez Fernandez. Haley Lofek. Vasiliki Macris. Alicia Mancio. Ilana Malman. Kristen Mariani Esquire. Cody Marshall. Ryan Martin. Stephanie Martinez. Gabriela Mercedes Martinez Lopez. Ryan R. Mayer. Jonathan Lane McGeehy. Ed Mesmer, <laughs> Kelly Meyer, <laughs> Ryan Mill, <laughs> Offering Mohiadeen, <laughs> Madeline Ann Moore. Nico Ambrose Moses. Ian M.K. Murray. Katie Nemeth. Sean Nevin. Kelsey 
Neil Nola. Mehmed Nurcheski. Dakota Ola. Patrick Joseph Owens. Gabriela Padilla Abarca. Nicholas Pannunzioman. Mitchell Parker. Noah Maverick Perrill. Priya S. Patel. Carl's Paul Noel. Patricia Piaskowski. Gabrielle Lynn Pilgrim. Natalia Plichta. Albert Ponce Cruz. Beatrice Radakovich. <laughs> Stephanie Raga. <laughs> Anastasia Lachey Redmond. <laughs> Jacob Edward Regan. <laughs> Ashley Nicole. Rice, Alyssa Marie Ritterhoff, Carly Rogers, Christopher Romero, Aurora. Rosado Rodriguez. Devin Ross. Catherine Marie Raveno. Robert Rucker. Allison Rymack. Alicia Saha. Yes, Anna Rebecca Saed. Anne Salome, Rana Salem, Sally J. Salmon, Cole Thomas Sampson. Brooke Saunders, Johnny Schrader, (laughs) 
Emily C. Shapiro. Stephen Schonder. Lauren Sedlecki. Mariana Sitnikova Esquire. Keaton Smith. Peter Joseph Sukenik. Dongying Su. Ashley Marie L. Sutherland. Evan Turcott. Marcus Terrell Turner, Jr. Esteban Beltiera. Julia Wieser. Jorge Velazquez. Erica Wagner. John Wallace. Sayina Warner. Megan Warshawski. Fernando Wiener. Alexander Huang. Monica T. Witten. Alethea Williams Wofer. Morel Williams. Sylvia Wolak Rokita Esquire. Jia Yun. I will note we had no air horns this year. <laughs> Shannon Yap. Alyssa Xingmei Yoshina. And certainly not least, but last, Haley Zobel. I have one more, I have one more applause line for you. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Illinois Institute of Technology, I confer upon you the degree of juridical science doctor, master of laws, 
or Juris Doctor and admit you to all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Congratulations, Class of 2023. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dean Sowell. To the class of 2023, know that it has been my honor to bask in your successes, and I so look forward to watching your careers flourish. This concludes the 2023 Chicago Kent College of Law commencement. Congratulations yet again, class of 2023. I ask that the audience please remain seated until the academic recession concludes.